Welcome back YouTube, Bowden the Great here with some new player tips for the game My Time at Sandrock that just released on Early Access last week. I'm sure you'll quickly notice that there is a lot of things to do right out the gate, and while the story does a good job at guiding you, it really doesn't give any reference on what you should or should not be doing to really optimize your time. But before we get into everything, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe because I've got a lot more My Time at Sandrock content coming your way soon. The first and very first thing you'll notice is, holy shit, I feel like the days fly by so quickly, which is exactly how I felt when I first fired it up. After doing resource gathering and quests, it didn't leave me much time to socialize with other characters and explore the town. So I highly recommend going into your settings and changing the speed of your game to half. It's not really advertised in the game, which I think it should be, just because of how time, how quickly time flies by, and I feel like you're able to actually enjoy the game a little bit more if time is going passing a little bit slower. This should hopefully slow things down enough that you feel you're not stressed out trying to get quests and commissions done and still give you time to build relationships with town people. Now that you'll have a lot more time with the chain setting, I recommend trying to complete a commission from the commission board daily. Not only do you gain money, or better known as goals, in game, you also gain relationship points along with XP and rep. Now, pay attention though before just blindly accepting commissions because some will have a very short time frame to get it turned around and completed, and you may not be able to complete it in the time amount allowed. But don't worry though, even if you fail, nothing negative actually happens to your character. Now, a large part of the game, as I mentioned before, requires you to gather resources. If you play the game for over five minutes, you'll probably have already noticed that though. And once you've changed your settings, like I mentioned before, to allow for more time in the day, I recommend you spend your morning's first thing gather necessary resources to complete commissions or to upgrade, build your equipment. And once you've likely burned through the majority of your energy or stamina, you can actually head into town, do a little socializing with some of the residents, and stop by the Blue Moon to eat some food and gain some of your energy back so you can head back out before bed and do some more resource gathering. Now for the most part, I'm pretty keen on slower gameplay and just kind of taking your time and exploring everything and just having fun with the game overall but I highly recommend progressing through the story far enough to get the actual crane lifts built because this will give you access to the abandoned ruins. In these abandoned ruins, you'll find a lot more data disks which are crucial for progressing further and helping making your life easier in game. Key's research is not instant and usually takes at least a day to research, so I recommend keeping him constantly fed with data disks so he's never actually not researching some equipment. Speaking of equipment, I recommend building more than one of each piece of equipment once you're in a more stable position because this will really help speed up production and recycling. Before you start that though, it's important to note that you'll have to pay a lot more attention to your water levels and fuel levels. Water can either be bought from Water World or crafted from Dew. I recommend crafting at least two Dew Collectors when you get the blueprint, but also you're going to want to have at least bought one expansion level to fit everything in your workshop. And regarding skills, I highly recommend grabbing the Water Conservation Knowledge skill as soon as possible, along with the Herbal Knowledge. These two perks should really help with your water management. Now by now, you're probably collecting enough goals in-game, and now you're wondering, what do I spend this on? Now certainly, you're free to spend it on whatever you want, whether it's more cosmetics, furniture, supplies, materials, etc. But if you're trying to optimize it, I recommend saving your money for water when you run out early games. It's a bit more difficult to automate your water with dew collectors or most importantly, land expansions. You'll very quickly find that when you start building two of each machine and farming that your land will fill up. So it's best to aim to expand first, then buy other stuff second. Now my next tip may seem obvious, but always have your recyclers working. It sounds like a no brainer, but you always wanna have your recyclers working to recycle the scrap that you find. It'll make your life easier because it'll save you time in the future and present from having to go resource gathering. And lastly, when you're running around town, be sure to swing by Yan's workshop because sometimes he'll have different material that you can borrow permanently, but you definitely don't wanna get caught, whether that be copper bars or jerky. Hopefully these tips will get you started on the right track and set you up to be the best builder that Sandrock has ever seen. If you have any questions or if you have any other tips you'd like to add, please drop them in the comments section below. See you next time, YouTube.